In this episode, I'm at the Pond Digger Ranch in Cherry Valley, California to get to know Eric Triplett, the Pond Digger. Naylor, dude, how long have you been here? <laughs> I just got here, man. Those mountains in the back are sick. Dude. I gotta take you to this pond. Uh, it was attacked by a bear and the guy's pissed off at me on the phone. I've been waiting for you. I told you LAX was a mess. Let's all go. Right. All right, all right. Get in the truck. Let me give you the lowdown. Um, this customer is, this is our job folder for him. The customer uh, has been with us since 2011. We haven't done a lot of work for him. Uh, just some retrofit work. Again, we didn't build the pond, but we've been servicing him for a while. He called and said um, a bear had attacked his pond and that his pond was leaking. So uh, I told him you were coming along for the ride. Let's go check it out. decade ago uh, we started you know a working relationship I would uh, use him for excavation and then one day I came over here and he had this pond here only there was nothing around it but dirt it was just a hole and had these you know baseball size softball size rocks in this giant circle around there and I was like oh my god why don't we start putting some character stones around here and make this interesting he's like well it's just an irrigation pond I irrigate all my my trees and stuff I was like, we could still make it interesting. It is, it is really fun, and it was, it was cool for me to hear you. You know, when you were filming, you go like, oh my God, this, this, you know, it's so easy to film this stuff. It's yeah. so pretty, it's so nice to look at. Yeah. And and imagine that translating into people's backyards. Like right. people cry and shit yeah. when you're finished. Like I'm getting goosebumps telling yeah. you this. We finish a pond and it transforms their own total, total backyard. Right. Women are crying, men are like tearing up. You know, it's like, it's it's an amazing feeling. So. It's a, it's a really cool part of the business. So this, how long did this all take you? Obviously not you personally, but the Pond Digger mm -hmm. company to put all this together. Yeah. Looks like he put these chairs up to try and keep the bear from hopping over here. Look. There's the claw marks right there. One of them. I'm touching the dirt right now. Look. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's actual. That's the earth. That's just so the bear just got in there and just it. played around and just tore it up. Yeah. No better way to get to know the pro than to come out onto the job site, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's, we got a good one over here too. I think um, the bear must have got in and scratched his way out. I got a 10-inch tear right here too, Larry. Okay. So he, he, tore, he, tore it all he went through he, he went through the whole thing. <clears throat> I saw that the first time around, but I thought it was maybe a wrinkle. So in the meantime, if you need something temporary, you just gotta let me know. I do have some holding tanks we could we could arrange to help you through. Sounds of the ranch, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We've got peacocks in the morning, roosters, you know, the pigs are squealing. It's, it's, uh, it's fun around here. I mean, you can't beat this view, man. This is like... We've been here about eight or nine months just working on logistics and, you know, setting up our infrastructure for everything. 
Um, but we just moved from other, our other home to here, yeah. Yeah, but so now, instead of having a separate shop that you were wasting money wasting. for years yeah. and, a, and a separate house, now you have them combined with, with how many acres? There's five acres here. Five acres, yeah. and it's all yours yeah. that you're putting money we're towards. We're putting equity into it. I mean, it's like a, a I mean, it's a trifecta. Man. Yeah. This is the awesome. epic thing about it is, is like we're backed up to the canyon. Yeah. Uh, you know, that the canyon's not ours, it's the water company, but we've got water company on both sides of us. So when you sit here, it's like we're five acres, but like we have no neighbors. I mean, right. it's beautiful. I and know. and it's scary when you when you uh, when you do the math of renting property, in which we, we made money for years and years renting, right? But you know, after you're there for ten years, you pay five grand a month for a facility do the math yeah. you know you drop to half a million and you have no equity that sucks so this this is a different this is a transitional point in our life and it's really cool to do it you know well I tell you man this the the sites are <laughs> are like more than epic and worth it man yeah. it's it's this doesn't even do it justice you have to like be here I'm not saying everyone come bum rush the pond digger yeah <laughs> but uh, bring it on you know it it's uh it's 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 pretty nice man thanks awesome what's the backstory between how Eric became the pond digger take us take us down that road or that journey take you only want this to be journey. 20 minutes though right <laughs> <laughs> it took me 20 years the backstory I was um, heavily into aquatics like fish tanks and African cichlids to be specific but what did you do before that I was a I was a carpenter. Okay. At, right out of high school I got into construction okay. and you know construction running crews was like a Part of my life when right. I was growing up. So somewhat of an easier transition with that. Right. But then I, I uh, decided that I wanted to be in aquatics. You know, it's crazy because it seems cliche because like everyone's like, today, like, you got to do what you love. But I, somehow, I, intrinsically, I just figured that out at a young age. Early 20s, I was like, I don't want to be 50, which I am this year. I don't want to be 50 years old <laughs> and like, um, you know, on a roof, swinging a hammer. You know, running a nail gun. I just, I did, I just couldn't see myself at 50 doing that. And I was like, I am gonna pursue um, my passion of, of aquatics, aquariums at that time. Uh, I dabbled in ponds in my early 20s, but okay. uh, it wasn't until you know a little bit later where I really took a splash into into ponds. So, but you know, it's funny is because I. I started out, I was underwater fantasies and I was exotic aquatics and I was exotic waterscapes and like these changing of, of brands and business names. And then I bought, uh, I bought a big four wheel drive truck and uh, one of my good, good friends for a long, long time said, you, you kind of look like the grave digger with that truck. Maybe we should call you the pond digger. And I was like, what? What did you call me? <laughs> and it was like it was like a real cool go. moment. Yeah, the star was born. Yeah, so he <laughs> he he coined me the pond digger. I didn't come up with that. Well, that's awesome. But that that is the business name, right? Uh -huh. The pond digger. The pond and digger. And all yeah. of your social media platforms, the pond digger. Yep. And all that. Yeah. How did um how, how did so in Helix is another another name in the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. That's also one of your brands, right? Yeah. How did yeah. that come about? I uh, that. That was an, I'm an accidental manufacturer. That's what I consider myself, an accidental manufacturer. I, um, I'll take you back 20 years ago when I was in aquatics in my yeah. early 20s. I have a, one of my really good friends who I'm still friends with today. We would have these arguments, not necessarily arguments, but like these heated little conversations of, of the best ways to clean uh, the aquarium or the best way to do biological filters and so on and so forth. But we, we would have all these um, topics, you know, sometimes for hours about the best way to do biological filtration on, a, on an aquarium or what have you. And um, one day, you know, like about in 2010, 2011, I went through that process in my head of all the equipment that I use in the industry. Like I got serious about it. Back then it was just like fun and we were just playing around, but I was like, there's something serious about this. And then I, it was weird. I wrote all these things down about, um, about skimmers, the pond skimmer, Helix pond skimmer is, is my patent, but I wrote down all these things I liked about all the skimmers on the market, every single skimmer on the market, I had them all listed out, and everything I hated about the other, you know, other right. sides, like the pros and cons, right. and I had them all written out, and I, um, I was just like sitting there staring at this paper, and I went to bed, and I had a dream about the Helix pond skimmer, like I figured it out in my sleep what, what I wanted to do, and I woke up like, I got it. You know, I got goosebumps telling you this right now wow. because it was like that's yeah. how it went down. It's awesome. And it all comes back from like just my passion is like what I love to do yeah. you know, back from, you know, 25 30 years ago. So what's bigger than for you right now from from a from a business standpoint, the Helix mm -hmm. uh, or 
the pond digger itself? Or are they uh, both kind of related? They're all they're all kind of you know everything's interwoven. You know because we have it's all under one umbrella. Yeah, the pond digger is our construction company, and Exotic Waterscapes is our is our um, wholesale wholesale business oh, gotcha. and retail online presence. Okay. But the pond digger is like the marketing piece for all of it together, and Helix was it's just like the side light side light thing, right? Right. And so I'm like I'm kind of spread equally through all these. You know spots of my business so you know if something starts to sh shrink a little bit i go and put my energy there and it comes up and it's so you know i think i think he looks could be like probably bigger than everything combined if i went a hundred into it right but, you know i i don't want to go hundred into it i told you, you like, i was like all those things yeah, yeah i mean i mean i'm an accidental manufacturer right that's like right. It, it was a total accident that happened so i i love all these other aspects you know i it's, i often think about times where like I don't have to dig ponds anymore. I could just build equipment to make ponds and I could probably never put a shovel in the ground again. But I don't I wouldn't be happy like that, you know? Like I, I actually still really love the craft. Yeah. I like to put that shovel in the ground. Shovel, like I, I never have to use a shovel again if I don't want to. I, I put that shovel in the ground because I care. You know, that's that's what I And that's that's your logo is that shovel in the yeah, ground, man. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. Where did you get all of these animals from? We just acquired them. I got this one for my wife as a gift. I got the other pig as, you know, for her, I think probably Mother's Day or her birthday. I don't know. It's like... What says, what's a better Happy Mother's Day than a pig? <laughs> <laughs> I have way more chickens than Caleb. I don't care what he says. Hey, hey girls! These are, these are only a couple months old. And so um, we're just growing them up big enough to where they won't get eaten by the local animals, and then we'll let them loose all day around the property. That's a lot of chickens. <laughs> Fighting the kid. We're just we're trying to make a fun a fun experience for for kids. I mean the animals are for us, but right. it's a nice it's a nice attraction, you know, and then yeah. when people come they get to experience things like this. You wouldn't believe how many So people come here? Yeah. Like this is this is like an educational place. I mean this is an educational center for us. My my one of my, my goals is to just have a an interactive place where people can come and learn about ponds mm -hmm. and learn about animals. I had I had a, a client that came in this morning. I met her at 9 a.m. straight up, had an appointment. It wasn't like I had to go to the store, open the doors, and wait for everything. We're already here at the ranch. We're already feeding animals. We're already, you know, doing things like that. She comes in, had an appointment, three thousand dollar pond kit. It's like that makes your day pretty nice at 9 a.m. Yeah. I still got the rest of the day to go, you know, on an interview with yeah. LCR Media. You know what I mean? <laughs> and not stress about it. Yeah, exactly. You just made some cash. Yeah. important to specific job tasks that we do. So for example, if we are uh, installing uh, underwater lighting, then we'll break out a couple of lighting kits. Uh, they left some stuff in the way. Here's my lighting kit right here. And then I have a, another lighting installation box over there. So those two boxes go together. Okay. And then that's what they're gonna need for lighting. So everything that's gonna be in there is gonna be 
um, you know, wire nuts from wire nuts to, to silicone to, to um, the screwdrivers, wire strippers, extra wire, like whatever you need to do that job from all the way down to like if we're going to mount the transformer on the wall, the right hardware to just, just do it quickly, right? So those particular boxes and each one of these boxes slides out. So like this is an autofill kit box. So if we're going to put an automatic fill kit on a box, I can break it loose and carry it into the backyard like that. And then so like if I know I'm going to do an autofill and I'm doing lights, I grab those three boxes and then the crew runs into the backyard and, and handles that. And at the end of the day, they can just come right back in here. And even, even after a long week, you know, we have some aquatic plants left over from a project. This is probably from earlier today. You know, and the guys, you know, we might do a little cleanup on Monday morning before we head out to the job site again. But everything we need in each one of these compartments is all ready to go for specific tasks. How long have you had this system? The system's brand new. By the time of filming this, these racks, um, these are van racks. They're, they're built for, ran, for a van. And we took them and put them in our trailer. Uh, there's, they've been making racks for several years now, but these racks are a little bit different. So they've been crash tested and what have you. So these racks have only been in here for maybe two months. What did you have before this? Uh, actually, I had an F450. We, we ran for a long time. And it was getting old and I had to make a decision and I kind of went old school. I used to have an old covered trailer like this. We had just shelves mounted on the wall and totes and it was kind of a mess. Um, but I went, I just felt like I wanted to go old school. I didn't want to spend 80 grand on a new F450. I just wanted to be more versatile and I went old school with this trailer and, I, and I'm super happy. And I just stumbled across these around that same time and I was trying to figure out how to organize my life in here, you know? <laughs> yeah. So these, these were like, I think it was timing was just like super, super on time. Well, we are at the Casey Compound in Redlands, California. Uh, I call it the Casey Compound, better known today as Casey Orchards, but it started out as a compound. What you're about to see, it took us, you know, probably five years of this working progress, uh, constantly working here. Uh, we did this little waterfall as part of a, a DIY clinic that we teach, where we teach people how to build ponds, they come in and work with us. But if you stand back and look, you'll see water go under the cement and on the other side there's a little pool and it goes up to another waterfall. So it gives an illusion and that's one of the really cool things about uh, water features. If you know how to do it, you can create illusions and make it look like it's supposed to be here. We built around it, you know. Walk up the creek. This is uh, another water feature we did as part of a a training event, but not so much training because we were working with a bunch of other contractors, you know, skilled uh, contractors at our Helix, uh, our Helix Summit. And so it's, it's still a training event because you're working with these other talented people that, you know, you're learning stuff, that little tricks that they do, and they're learning tricks from you, and it's just a fun, interactive uh, experience. But we did this as part of a, our Helix Summit. Come and see the big pond. So when I met Pat Casey, probably about a decade ago, uh, we started you know, a working relationship. I would uh, use him for excavation, and then one day I came over here and he had this pond here, only there was nothing around it but dirt. It was just a hole, and had these, you know, baseball-sized, softball-sized rocks in this giant circle around there. And I was like, oh my God, why don't we start putting some character stones around here and make this interesting? He's like, well, it's just an irrigation pond. I irrigate all my, my trees and stuff. I was like, we could still make it interesting. And then just like from there, it snowballed. We set three rocks and then we sent 10 rocks and then 12 rocks. And now he's got a beautiful wedding venue here and he makes money because the pond looks so cool. So it was a really fun uh, experience to watch it grow and develop. And we're still working here all the time. So the, it took about, I would say about three years for the pond to really get developed and everything. Cause when, I, when we first got here, there was not a single plant in here. Again, just baseball sized rocks around the pond. So, um, we started planting this organic edge to help, you know, balance the system out. Uh, we installed an active bog filter on the other side of the pond. I'll show you that in a minute. But we, we put these rocks out here. Remember I talked about illusions, you know, it's like, yeah. this is going to be an interactive pond where people can hang out and you should see this place on the 4th of July. It's a big old party. But, um, you know, we put these, these stepping stones out there and just the feel of standing out on that rock, I mean, 
it's only 15 feet from here, but when you get out there, you feel like you're in the center of the pond. Uh, we'll probably put one more rock out there one of these days. So now that this natural edge is already grown in all the way down, it helps balance the pond, but it also helps balance like the fish, the fish habitat in here. Because when we first got this place, he was throwing bass in here and bluegill, and then all of a sudden there's no bluegill, and there's only bass and there's only catfish. But now that we have this natural edge done, we can stock the pond, and then the ecosystem starts where you know the bluegill spawn every year, and they become food source for the bass and the catfish and so on and so forth. So. You know, planting the edges is super, super important on a big pond like this. So this is an active bog filter, so we're actually pumping water from the pond into this section right here, running all the water up through the, the root systems and the, and the gravel through without this filter, and then dumps it back into the pond. So it's like, you know, uh, it's a beautiful way to filter a pond, you know, all these beautiful plants. We have to thin this thing out like every single week. It grows so fast. So it's more to, uh, there's more to a pond than just, you know, throwing water and rocks in there. You have to find that ecological balance for it from aquatic plants to biological filters and so forth. That's, that's part of the fun of the whole thing is that constant, constant growing and learning. So this place is crazy on the 4th of July. I mean, there's like 40 people in there swimming and in paddle boats and, you know, stand up uh, surfboards and so forth. And I remember one time, the way I build, I have a lot, a lot I like to have an interactive water feature where I have a lot of flat spots where people can sit or you can walk across the stonework. And uh, I remember when I did this, I had that in mind. I was here on the 4th of July and I was up in this deck destination spot just sitting there and this group of kids come walking up, about 10 or 12 of them. And they walked up here, they were all young teens I would say in that age. And they sat around this little, little pond right here on each rock with their feet in the water and they were just talking and giggling and having fun it was just like a really cool moment for me you know they weren't playing on their phones they weren't on instagram they were just sitting here talking and interacting and that was a really cool moment for me and, it, and it's just like it brought it full circle So this, how long did this all take you, obviously not you personally, but the Pond Digger mm -hmm. company to put all this together? Yeah. To put this project together, we've been working on it about five years. It's like just an ongoing process. It's not like the guy came up to me and was like, hey, let's, you know, I'll give you this much money, you know. Um, it's just been like a it's, a, it's a fun interactive thing that we get to do all the time. So it's about five years in the works and we, We'll probably still be working on it in another five years. You know? this, this is, is this like a typical job for you, or do you have more of like some like this is kind of like a lot of things that you do all in one? Yeah. But a lot of times you, I'm guessing, you do like smaller sections of this for one person's yard ER or property, exactly. things like that. Exactly. It's almost like a showcase because uh, it did when we first started this. This was just an irrigation pond, but right. it turned into a wedding venue, and so it's really cool because you know it's kind of compartmentalized in certain areas, a destination spot, put a waterfall over here, put a rock fountain over there, you know. Right. And, and so people can go, oh, I can really see this in my yard. You know, put stepping stones across things, put bridges, and so like, all those different components, it's like they can see everything in one spot. Yeah, it's the, do, you show, do you take customers here sometimes? Oh, yeah. Do you all have time. like uh, consultations and stuff with them sometimes yeah. over here? all the time. This can definitely seem overwhelming and intimidating for someone that wants to get into building ponds. They want to add mm -hmm. that to their landscaping business. Yeah. I really, really want you to take, uh, take a few minutes to kind of walk mm -hmm. through the steps on like, if they want to get to this level or they just yeah. want to start somewhere like wh where do they go like how, how do you get even get into most this? of the most of the professionals that i know that are doing it on a larger scale they all started smaller you know and even a big pond like this that you see it's, it's the same thought process you know like building a small pond you know there's right ecological things you got to go and filtration and so forth but if you want to get into this I, my best recommendation is like do a feature in your backyard you know what i mean if you're if you're a pond guy and you don't have a pond in your backyard come on you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, if you really want to take a splash in the in the business of building ponds, put one in your backyard. Put one in your mom's backyard. Your mom's gonna be a great, you know, person to be right. like, oh my God, my son. You know, like, yeah. you, you put it in mom's backyard or you know, some relatives. If you have a uh, a friend or a family member that has a business, maybe you can put a small display out front. The, the cool thing about this is when you do it that way, you're you're um, you're getting photographs of your own displays. You know, it's. It's kind of weird when you take a picture of someone else's pond and then you use it in your marketing pieces and go, hey, I can build this for you. And you're like, oh, when did you build that? Like, 
example. I never, I didn't build that one. Right. So if you, if you, you know, plus you graduate along the way. Each pond you build, or each water feature you build, you get a little bit better and a little bit better. So your portfolio grows. So if you start taking pictures of other people's ponds, but you're not to that skill set yet, you know, you're not really delivering. Yeah. You know, you're over promising, right. under delivering. Right. We talked about yeah. that. You know. Yeah. So I think, I think that that's the way to go. And. Um, I've helped a lot of guys get started in the business. Personally, like yeah, help, yeah. like give them advice all the time. Call. Yeah. It, are they local or just people through all social over. media that no. connect with you? Like, all how, how do they connect with you? I mean, well, from YouTube, from um, you know, our Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all the all those platforms. People, you know, on my platforms, I'm always teaching pond pro tips. Right. And so people come to learn and then they reach out and they ask me questions and then we develop relationships and all of a sudden, you know, right. they're sending me examples of what their logo might be, right. you know, right. and I might go, oh, I love it or no, dude, that's not going to work. You throw that one out, start over. So um, I've helped a lot of guys get started in that, in that. and gals. Right. Yeah. What, what are some resources other, aside, in addition to you, what uh -huh. are some resources like that, that you had to rely on because there wasn't a pond digger when you started? Like what, yeah, what yeah. are some resources for these guys and girls? Well, um... You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of pond guys in the business now. Okay. You know, and, and are they as willing to share tips and tricks as yourself? Some of them are. Some of them are. Some of them are still kind of. You know, they pull back a little bit. But I think. I think Instagram's a great resource for, you know, doing hashtag and finding out like ponds or disappearing waterfalls and pond contractor. You know, something like that, and, and just start looking around. Right. And some guys will be more willing than others. You know, we have. I have a network of Helix contractors that, you know, are you know, kind of all in my affiliates, and we all like equally love to share and things like that so you know that's a great way to go too okay yeah there's, um, there's not much books I mean YouTube is, is probably one of the best resources as well you know you go to YouTube type in pond construction and now you're getting videos on how to do it you know yeah step-by-step -step instructional stuff you know it's like it's not like you're buying a book anymore right you know? so what are some pitfalls that you want that you would say to help people stay away from when they're first starting out some common things that people mess up you know uh, the pitfalls Growing too fast is a little scary. I've seen I've seen contractors try and grow too fast, mm -hmm. buy too much equipment, too much trucks, take on too much overhead. That's something that they should definitely look into, be careful of. Um, I think that a lot of times if they don't really understand their numbers or they don't understand the bidding process, I have a lot of contractors still to this date that they've been doing a long time. They come in and and they just they they came up with a number that they thought was right for the pond. And they're like, hey, I got 7,000 to do this pond. And it sounds like a lot of money, right? And I'm like, dude, your pond kit's 5,000. Like, how are you gonna make money? You didn't even buy rock yet. Like, and so now they're trying to trim corners and stuff. So it's, it's really important to understand the bidding process. Tell us a little bit about the manufacturing side. So you were saying before you created the Helix product. Yeah. Where is that taking you? Man, it's been cool. It's, it's helped us, you know, um, help set us aside from you know the masses because we have our own little unique invent um, innovations yeah. and um, you know it's cool because now I have contractor support I've, we're supporting contractors across the country and we are, are teaching our DIY clinics and uh, we're heading to Vegas next week to do a DIY clinic and uh, we'll probably be doing one in Northern California we're doing them at our ranch and so That's it's awesome. cool I feel like we're just we're training the public you know, and, and contractors that want to learn too. We want to, we want the public, we want the public to be um, educated as well. The the Helix line um, has brought us to a new paradigm where like a, I want to take education to like a different level, and so that's why we created the DIY clinic, and that we're going to travel around and help people, and we're going to host a lot of stuff at our ranch. You know, we want our ranch to be like a, a training facility where people come and just learn about all the different things. Anyone, right? Like contractors anyone, yeah, contractors or homeowners. Or homeowners. Yeah, yeah, we. But we, are, we really want to focus a lot on homeowners because we want them educated. We want them to ask the contractors the right questions, right. and we want the contractors to be asking the homeowners the right questions. We want we want it to go better, together better, and then hopefully ponds gone wrong just goes away. Right. Like, that doesn't exist anymore. So is that kind of like a secret passion of yours to eliminate oh, these yeah. awful ponds? I yeah, mean, yeah, the fish yeah. are suffering. So yeah. talk, talk about the fish. We haven't talked about that. I, I've noticed in your social media you have like a like a love and a passion for these koi fish, right? The passion started from my love for aquatic animals. You know, when I was a kid, having a newt in my bedroom at you know five, six years old, a little aquarium, ten gallon, you know, yeah. and I mean it started from that, and then it went to you know going to the parks in Long Beach or El Dorado Park, and you know playing around in the water and catching little mosquito fish and tadpoles and whatever I could get my hands on so it all it all kind of stemmed from that and so I want that aquatic environment to be just 
perfect for the fish. Yeah. And when it's perfect for the fish, it's perfect for the people. Right. You know, I, I don't want the pond that's perfect for the person, but not good for the, the aquatic inhabitants. And th that's another reason that part of that whole, the, the Helix taking me to the educational process. You know, we're working, we just launched a podcast. The podcast is going to be based on pond pro tips to teaching the public. So you're, you're asking me how, how people can learn. It's like, you know, I'm giving all these different outlets. Right. So people can reach out to you, the Pond Digger, everywhere yeah. on social everywhere. media. Everywhere. Pond Digger. Yeah. Right. Website. My website. People come through, through the website. There. A lot of times, if you come through the website, you'll go through my staff. Like it'll trickle down and get yeah. to me. And my staff's dynamite at helping people out with the process. Pond kits, teaching people, right. directing into certain things, helping with their research. Um, so, and then. And then I'm always out in the field, but I'm always checking on Instagram, trying to DM people back, answer questions, be supportive yeah. to whoever wants to get into the hobby and the business. Right. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thanks for letting me come out Dude, here. I'm so this, glad this you place came. is beautiful, and uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Man. Hopefully, we're going to help some people out. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. There's machines running on the ranch. Ranch noise. Just deal with it.